Hi, I'm Christy. I'm the District Vet for Hunter Local Land Services based in Singleton and I'm here today with Teresa who's our Livestock Officer in the Hunter and we're down at the Singleton Pasture Demo site for the open day today and we just wanted to give you a quick update on what we're seeing and um, a few reminders. Um, we'll start off with the reminder to vaccinate. So vaccination's probably your best insurance policy at the moment. Um, prices of cattle and sheep are still very, very good. So it is the cheapest insurance policy you have. What we've been seeing is unfortunately some really easily preventable diseases that could be prevented with a five in one or a seven in one vaccine. So your seven in one covers your lepto as well as your clostridial diseases. And the importance of lepto is for your breeding stock, but most importantly for us humans, because lepto is a zoonosis, so we can catch it. So you catch it from being in contact with the bodily fluids or the urine. So if you're assisting with carvings or you're potentially getting splashed with urine in a dairy, you should vaccinate those cattle with a seven in one, whereas your steers and your younger stock can be done initially with a five in one. And um, as we discussed, Teresa, the most important part of the five in one is, and the seven in one is giving that booster. Absolutely. So we give the first one and then four to six weeks later, we give that booster, which is absolutely essential. And it's preferable to have your first one done even before marking. And so then your booster is done at marking for when you're creating wounds. And then you give an annual booster after that. But um, unfortunately, the pulpy kidney enterotoxemia part of the uh, vaccine doesn't actually last the full 12 months it only lasts for three months and so it's really really important if you're changing or introducing a different feed which could be hay could be grain or simply moving to a different pasture is that you give a booster before you introduce that new feed so it's um it's important to cover your animals for those easily preventable clostridial diseases such as tetanus black leg, pulpy kidney, and make sure that they're really well protected because it's heartbreaking and very disappointing to lose animals to clostridial diseases at the moment. Yeah, you're right, Christy. I think uh, one of the biggest things that we're, we're getting across at the moment is it sort of sounds like we're a bit of a broken record, but it's about risk management. And with the price of our livestock at the moment, you want to be preventing these things from happening. And, you know, simple things such as vaccination can save you a lot of money. 100%. And same with drenching. You know, we're seeing some very, very large worm burdens in adult cattle and sheep, which we're not used to seeing. And unfortunately, our drenches, which contain one active ingredient, don't really any longer have a purpose. We need to use those drenches that have at least two active ingredients from two different families. And what we need to do is test. We need to use our worm test kits, see what worms we have, see how high our burden is, and see if we need to drench it all. Then use an appropriate drench, and it could be a pour on an injectable and oral. And if you've got your single active, your mectins, what you need to then at the same time is add in one of the different drenches, add in one of your white drenches, such as your lavamazole at the same time. So you can still use your mectins, you've just got to add something else in with them because we don't like seeing massive worm burdens in animals and it really does affect production, it affects weight gain and it affects the welfare of the animal. Mm, it certainly does and you know that that condition slipping and if you're noticing it in the paddock you're already on the back foot and you know as as you start to notice that condition slipping, productivity has already been lost. And, you know, as I just said, it's all about risk management and preventing these things from happening. And that's actually a really good segue into something that's uh, making our season even more challenging than we would have expected at this time of year. And that's actually our pasture quality. So with the weather that we've had around at the moment, the the pastures have been booming and the paddocks look really good and there's green feed in the paddocks but on closer inspection we're actually finding that the pasture quality is not there and and the livestock aren't doing as well as we would expect them to be doing on these pastures and a lot of that's to do with the season uh, you know the the increase in rainfall the the speed at which our pastures are, are growing is meaning that the nutrition nutritional value is not there and the feed testing I've been doing across the district is is we're finding that the protein and metabolizable energy is is back on where it should be to meet nutritional demand and you know we at this time of year we as we head in towards winter and and into the cold cold weather and we're preparing for our winter feed gaps sort of around that end of winter early spring there are a few things we need to be considering including our supplementary feeding options but I think this year and the season that we're having I think we're going to see people 
uh, implementing an additional feeding source and some supplementary feeding just to meet that nutritional demand uh, and if that's the case it's about being prepared for what's ahead and, and knowing that you will probably have to start feeding and then if you make that decision to start feeding it's about introducing that feed slowly yep so christy mentioned with our with our vaccinations that you know we're, if we're moving cattle onto different pastures or introducing a new feed source that vaccination is important but it's also important to introduce that new feed slowly making sure that the animal has time to adapt to the new feed and that includes between uh, batches of particular feed types just making sure that you know hungry animals aren't going onto fresh fresh pastures or new pastures and allowing that room and time to adapt to the new feed and you know, preventing things from going wrong. And we're finding already that a lot of people have already had to begin supplementary feeding because the quality isn't there and the amount of rain we've had. It might look green, but it's just the nutritional value is lacking. And we have the feed test kits and the worm test kits at all of our local land services offices. So please feel free to drop in, give us a call to any of the local land services offices, grab a couple of kits, test your pasture, test your faecal samples and, and um, hopefully we can keep the animals fit and healthy through winter. That's right. Thanks.